Welcome back, my fellow agents. It is I, your agent of Animated Awesome. Today, we're going to talk about a show that never aired in the United States uh, in the 60s. It is The Golden Bat, or Oganbato, if you will. And we're just going to give you a little overview of it while looking at some of the lovely animation of the 1966 cartoon series. Pardon me, 1967. Um... So we're not going to watch too much of it because I think that's what sealed my doom. This probably isn't so, so unusual. Or it's not on YouTube anyway, although you can find uh, dubbed versions in French, I believe, on YouTube. Be that as it may, the Golden Bat has a long, a rich uh, history here. It was um, one of the first, uh, it, according to uh, Wikipedia, it was... This superhero, though he wasn't, I don't think he was a superhero, was created in 1930 as a Kami a paper theater. Now, he looks like a Western hero to me, like, say, a cowboy with, but I don't know. I've never seen any. Um, and uh, they're saying that he was a comic book hero, but I mean, there were, I don't know. It doesn't matter, really. <laughs> But 1930, so that's pretty darn early for heroes. Though, I mean, superheroes like Samson, you know, strong men have existed all throughout history. And strong women, too, for that matter. Atalanta, super fast. Just to name examples. They just weren't in book form or comic book form or paper form. Be that as it may, it was created by 16-year-old Takeo Nagamatsu and 25-year-old Suzuki Ichiro in 1931. That just says... Up there, there's two different things here. Thanks, Wikipedia. So, according to them, that the character was in three live-action movies. Uh, one, uh, Ogambato Matenro no Kaijin in 1950, Ogambato 1966, and apparently something Ogambato ga yakata, yaka, Yarakuru in 1972. I've only seen the movie and, like, seven of the episodes of the cartoon, but... Since the cartoon is uh, here and I have it subtitled a bit, we will, um, not a bit, I didn't have it subtitled. I don't remember who did. We've only done four. There's our hapless hero, uh, the professor. So um, they're on their way to Atlantis. And of course, there's the daughter. There's, she's obviously uh, an American. I believe she's... She's not in the, um, yeah, Emily Beard is her name. So this uh, came after the movie. And the professor is absent-minded, of course. And he's there. Uh, let's see what we got here. Skipping about a bit. It's not going to be a long one. Oh, and let's get back. All right. It would be scary. So our villain uh, as of right now, who's been destroying ships, is Nazo, a sinister being. And he's got a claw for his left hand and four eyes that are all of different colors. He's a little scarier in the cartoon. The comic book, or pardon me, the movie, tried to do it a little too literally, and his ears look a little ridiculous. There have to be some adaptations for Live action. There just have to be. I realize that now. As a kid, I was a little more stringent. But, yeah, Live and learn, right? The movie uh, had Sunny Chiba as Dr. Yamatone. Um, Wataru Yamakawa as Akira Kazahawa. You can watch it on Tubi under the title Golden Ninja, which makes no sense. Because you hear them say Golden Oganbato the whole time, which... Ogon is Japanese for gold. So it, uh, uh, Koji, Koji Sekiyama is the voice of Nazo. Well, maybe, I don't know. They don't give a lot of, oh, here we go. 
nope, I don't have anything in here about the comic, the cartoon that we're watching or seeing pictures of. And not listening to it all. It's got a great thing. Now, Lord Nazo is from outer space in the movie and has really weird powers and subordinates. But I haven't seen enough of the... He's got a lot of weird powers and the same powers. It's basically the same story. He wants to conquer the world. And our heroes are looking for the lost continent of Atlantis. They find it. This is called The Birth of the Golden Bat. Uh, debuted April 1st, 1967. Uh, your humble agent was almost two years old, so. <laughs> but the show got released in um, Australia, dubbed under, I think it was called Phantom Man or Phantom Ma. But it has been released internationally in many places. These, This is a fan subtitle, which I really appreciate because it just, would've, I would have loved this cartoon as a kid. Uh, it's got heroes, a strange hero. Uh, the studio is Daiichi Doga. Um, and it was uh, in Australia, it was on Nine Network. It ran from April 1st, 1967 to March 23rd, 1968, with 52 episodes. No movies. <clears throat> Music is by Tanaha Tanaka Masa Masashi. But again, we're kind of avoiding that whole thing of not getting a strike. Oh. <laughs> Now look at that, the supercar. Does that look like a supercar? And here's one of our other heroes. Who's looking there. Said they're on their way looking for Atlantis. And there's their uh, clumsy and always hungry henchman, obviously. And I don't remember either of these two names of the boy or the henchman, so I apologize. Oh, Dario is the henchman. Well, not the henchman. He's just the subordinate for the professor. Once again, clumsy. And uh, But he's neither of these. The girl, Emily, is the one who is responsible for finding the golden bat. Oh. And they're obviously supposed to be Caucasian. So this is an unusual one where they don't have the a cartoon in Japan from Japan in the 60s where they don't have the gigantic Disney eyes. Also something that makes it unique. <clears throat> the character is still around. And <clears throat> has been in a couple of other uh, movies. I believe he was one in... Um, he was in one in, from... Unlicensed, of course, from South Korea. Drawing a blank there. Let's see. Um, he's a being from ancient Atlantis. This says he was sent forward in time. Now he's in a coffin when they find him, so I don't know. I don't really... I trust this less and less. So there was a new manga adap adaptation. Of, yeah. Illustrated by Kazutoshi Yamane. And, um, so I don't know. I think this should be. I think this would have an audience. It's it's odd enough that I think it's just not. It's just unusual. So, Mary, who are these miserable persons? Five Finger is obviously the monster that they're using this time. Takaru Takaru is the boy. Go, boop. The supercar is a pretty cool idea, and I would like to have one. It's, you know, has whatever function it needs uh, that for whatever episode. They've rescued the daughter, Emily. And Gambare. Even I know what that is without translation. Let's see. Mama is in heaven, I bet you. <laughs> Um, so now they're in Atlantis. Oh, that's really noisy. Sorry about that. There's always old bones. Why are you scared of bones, you bone... Speaking of boneheads. So he's also, as the size of him, he's not as brave. They're just laughing at him. 
I know there's some big feet the, the doctor has got there. Divining. Oh, I don't know that that really works. And you're sticking it down a, a well. More ping, more penguins. This is just for some comedy bit. And we're about to see Nazo's ship, I would be willing to bet. It's been a minute since I've watched these. I've had them for several years. And unfortunately, they only subtitled the first four, which I was hoping meant it would be released sometime in this country. Um, yeah, Hung, Xing Hung Rei or something. Uh, Reptilian, there is the movie. Let's see if I can find the movie. I'll tell you. There it is. 1999 uh, remake of what happened here. That must be the. There it is. Weird drill ship. This looks great in the in the live action movie. Live action movie shot in black and white, which is highly unusual at the time. Uh, Shing Hung Rei. Shim Hung Rei. Let's see if uh, I can pull up any more. Did he? Yeah. He made a lot of things that were allegedly com comedies. I didn't mind yet the younger remake. And his Dragon War, uh, which are both in English. But yeah, he's um, as a director, as an actor, yeah. Urame 7, Sparkman. Um, I don't even know. I've seen a couple and they're difficult to get through. So I enjoyed Young Gree because he's not in it. <laughs> he knows how to direct a movie and he was very popular. Go figure. Anyway, so the Golden Bat, I think, appeared in one or two of one or two of his movies, or at least a couple in the, um, in that part of the world. They might not have been from the same guy. Oh, look, let's get some water. No water there. Denied. There's the golden bat himself. So the whole origin here is the same in both movies. There's just some different characters uh, in the black and white movie they're dressed up in their science patrol garb silver garb um, or whatever inframan had but i haven't watched it recently although the print on it's available on blu-ray if you want to buy five of them but there's there's no dubs there they have magic serpent and uh, one uh, um watari ninja boy which never had a dub and of course golden bat never had a dub and two other ones i'm drawing a blank on uh, but there are a lot of, they're, they're fun movies, and if it wasn't a $50 set, I probably would have bought it. And had they included the English dub for uh, The Magic Serpent, they definitely would have bought it, but uh, always hungry. Okay, oh, skip ahead a bit more here. I think she's going to cry, which activates the, oh, so the monster is trying to get to him. Another path. Dun, dun, dun. Uh oh, he dropped his divining rod. So it's a giant hand, which is a you know very common thing. It was used in Yushar Aydin. Uh, and there is the gold, golden bat who's bringing him something or another. <laughs> so see, he is under that stove. See, so the strong man comes in handy, finds the water. <laughs> Wouldn't that scare the hell out of you? And then that laugh. <laughs> There's his silver baton, and he's obviously very strong. So he defeats the hand in short order, and then they tell, throws it back at Nazo, uh, which means mystery or mis mysterious. I <coughs> had that looked up at one point, or it's written down because I plan to do an episode guide to this in Xenorama, the Journal of Heroes and Monsters, available on Amazon. And speaking of that, while we're there, 
please like, share, subscribe, vote in the poll if you haven't already. Or if, if you've watched this long, thank you. And I hope you've watched at least two or three minutes or listen to it for two or three minutes wherever you find your uh, your podcasts. Um, and I hope you're enjoying your big bowl of hummus of perfection. So let me get back over here. And I forget where I was, but yep, kaboom! The golden bat's very powerful. <laughs> and once again, he's threatened. Although it look, doesn't it look like he's wearing a jacket. <laughs> Without a trace. How could they not track this thing? There's a great shot. Um, yeah, I would have loved this. I mean, just weird enough to appeal to me. Because if you think about it, bat, somebody dressed as a giant bat or is going to be scary. And this is a golden bat. In my mind, you know, if this had been subbed or uh, dubbed into English, I mean, there's no blood. There's just a sp spooky looking hero. It was po very popular and Australia, so somewhere there's an English dub, or 52 episodes that has an English dub, and I don't know who dubbed it. It might have been Cope, no, not Copri, but um, the gentleman that did the, a lot of the Japanese stuff over there. Ted, not Ted Ross. Maybe Ted Ross? Frontier Productions. That's it. After that terrifying night... There you go, my fellow agents. Um, Atlantis is about to sink, but you don't have to worry. Our heroes are safe. There it goes. Atlantis go down the hole. And Ogambat with the supercar. Now it's explained that Emily will be able to summon him whenever they're in trouble, which is a good thing. And he's, you know, we don't even know much about him yet. I think that might be the song playing. Dun, dun, dun. So that's it. Um, that's pretty much how we're going to leave it. In fact, we're just going to close this right up and sign off. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the overview of the Golden Bat. Just remember if you do need, if you do have have tears, you can summon the bat. If you're righteous, that is. And until our next assignment, agent, agents, this is X7 signing off. <laughs>